to the front. Hey everybody, this is Scott Garagas from Digifreak, the music technology resource. And this is a demonstration of how to edit MIDI data using the Event Inspector in Cakewalk Sonar. If you're using Sonar 8.5 or earlier, you access the Event Inspector by choosing Views, Toolbars, and then putting a check mark next to the option labeled G Event Inspector. And then click Close. The Event Inspector will either show up as a floating toolbar here or at the top of the sonar interface in the regular toolbar area, like so. Now, if you're using Sonar X1 or later, the Event Inspector is located in the control bar, which is normally at the top of the interface. If you don't see it there, you can right click in the background of the control bar and make sure to select Event Inspector Module so that there's a check mark next to it. You may also have to hide some of the other modules in order to make it appear. Either way, uh, the Event Inspector works uh, exactly the same in all versions of Sonar. So now let's take the parameters one at a time. First we'll start with time, which is actually represents start time of any selected events. This uh, parameter works with clips, including audio clips, as well as individual notes or a selection of MIDI notes. So first let's take a look at a single clip. I'll select an audio clip here. When you do that, the time parameter automatically shows the current start time of the clip. Now this is represented in measures, beats, and ticks. So if you want to change this, you click on it and you can enter numbers in a variety of ways here. If you know you want to move a clip by an entire measure, all you have to do is type in the number of that measure. So let me move this clip to measure four. I'll type in four, press enter. And now the start time is at the beginning of measure four. If you want to change the start time by measures and beats, you can click, enter the measure number, press the period key on your PC keyboard, and then enter a beat number, and then press enter. Now the start time of the clip is located at measure five, beat three. In addition, to enter ticks, you would enter the measure number, period, beat number, period, and then the number of ticks. Let's just say 240. Now you can also alter the start time using modifiers, the plus and minus keys on your PC keyboard. And what this means is you can change the start time relative to the current start time. And you do that by adding or subtracting a number of ticks to the current value. Now by default, Sonar has the ticks per quarter note set at 960, which means 960 ticks equals one quarter note. To get different note values, you either double or have that value. So if you wanted to get an eighth note, it would be half of 960, which is 480. If you wanted to get a 16th note, you would have the 480 and bring that, that brings it down to 240. If you want a half note, you would double the quarter note value. So 960 times two is 1920. And then if you double that again to get a whole note or which also represents an entire measure, you would get 3840 ticks. So let's say I wanted to move the start time of this clip by, I don't know, a quarter note. Let's add a quarter note. So I would type in plus 960, enter, and that moves it forward in the project or towards the end by an entire quarter note. And you can do that the same way with the minus modifier. So let's take the quarter note off that we just added minus 960, enter, and now it's back to the original start time. This is great for moving it relative to the current time. Now, when you're working with clips, 
Another great technique is lining them up to the same start time. So let me keep this clip sele selected and I'll select this second clip here. Now, the time value will be blank because you hit it, it's representing two separate times. But if you click here, it'll show up and it'll actually display the start time of the first clip in whatever clips are selected. Now, if you enter an exact value here, let's say I want to move both of these and line them up at measure four. So I'll type in four, press enter, and both clips are automatically aligned exactly at measure four. Now, let me undo that and show you something else because the modifier keys work here too. So basically what that means is you can keep the relative distance of the start times of both clips to each other, but move both clips by a certain amount of ticks. So let's say I wanted to move both of these clips towards the beginning of the project by a quarter note. I would click here, type in minus 960, enter, and now both clips are moved towards the beginning by one quarter note, but they keep their relative distance from each other in time. Of course, the time parameter also works with individual MIDI notes as well as a selection of MIDI notes. And let me show you that now. I will bring up the notes in this MIDI clip here in the piano roll view. Now keep in mind, the event inspector can be used in the piano roll view, of course, but also in any of the other views where you can edit MIDI data, which include the staff view, um, the event list view, as well as the track view using the inline piano roll mode for MIDI tracks. Okay, so let me uh, remove the selection here by clicking in the background. I want to select a single note just to start. When you do that, the event inspector displays the start time of that single note. And then you can alter that the same way we did with the clips. So if you enter a value, it'll set the exact start time of that note to the value you enter. And of course you can use the uh, modifiers plus and minus to either add or subtract a number of ticks to the start time of the selected note. Now, if you select a group of notes, this will work similar to when we selected the two clips in the other example. So now the time value displays nothing because it's representing multiple start times. If you enter an exact value, it will set the start time of these notes to that exact value. So if I enter, uh, let's just bring it to the beginning of measure seven. So I'll type in seven, enter, and now all those notes start exactly at measure seven. Of course, it's probably not going to sound very good because they were all in separate time values before and now they're all jumbled up. Let me undo that. But you can also add a modifier here. So if we wanted to move the notes relative to their current position, I could, let's say, move them toward the beginning of the project by an entire measure. I would type in minus. 3,840, and that would move the notes towards the beginning of the project. Now let's take a quick look at the track view, and you'll notice when I do this, it moves, it, ex it actually automatically extends the MIDI clip. So let me undo what I did with the MIDI notes here, and you'll watch it. If Watch this MIDI clip here. The notes move back to their original location. If I redo that procedure, you'll see that it extends the MIDI clip automatically. Okay, next we'll take a look at the duration parameter. But keep in mind that all the remaining parameters will work with either single MIDI notes or a selection of MIDI notes. Now duration allows you to alter the length of any selected MIDI notes in three different ways. So I have a selection of MIDI notes here. Let me go bring the uh, piano roll view back up. Now what I can do is type in an exact duration and duration is always represented by ticks. So if I wanted to uh, set all of these selected notes to an exact value, say a quarter note, I would click, type in 960, press enter, and now all of those notes 
are exactly one quarter note long. Let me undo that. The other thing you can do here is also use the plus and minus modifier keys. Basically, the same way as we did before, you can say lengthen these by a sixteenth. So we will type in plus uh, 240, enter. And now all the selected notes are actually a 1 16th note longer than they were before. So it adds a 16th to the current duration or what the duration was before. And of course you can do the same thing with uh, subtraction. Now the other thing you can do is scale selected notes or scale the duration of selected notes by using a percentage. 100% represents the current value of the selected notes. So that means if you type in 100%, nothing will happen because that is the current value. If you want to lengthen the notes by a certain percentage, you would type in anything above 100%. So let's say we wanted to lengthen the notes by 20%. We would type in 120%, enter. And now they are 20% longer than they were before. Now, you can also go in the opposite direction. If you wanted to shorten them by 20%, let's, which will, in our current situation, bring them back to, the, to their default values, uh, you would type in 80% because that's 20% lower than 100. Enter, and now they're back to their original values. Next, let's talk about pitch. Now, pitch you can do use in a couple of different ways. Of course, it works with single notes or selected notes. You can enter an exact pitch value. If you do that and you have multiple notes selected, it will change all of those notes to the same exact pitch. So I have a selection of notes here. I click in pitch. Let's say I enter C4, enter, and now all of those notes are changed to a pitch of C4. But more, more than likely, you won't want to do that most of the time. Let me undo that. So the other thing you can do is also use the plus and minus modifier keys here. And in this situation, it allows you to transpose any selected notes up or down by semitones. So if I enter plus two, it transposes the nup, all the selected notes by a whole note or two half notes or semitones. And of course you can do minus two to bring them back to the original values. And plus 12 is up an octave, minus 12 is down an octave, and so on. Now for velocity, you can use the three different entry methods similar to duration. If you type in an exact value, all the selected notes will become that value. So if I enter 90, all the notes have a velocity exactly 90 right now. I can also add 10. So now all the notes have a velocity value of 100. Of course, I can use minus the same way. And I can enter a percentage. So if I want them to be 20% softer than what they are now, I would enter a value of 80% because that's 20% lower than 100, which represents the default value. And now they are 20% softer than they were before. As with the other parameters, the channel parameter works with single selected notes or a selection of multiple notes. Basically, you just select a note or a group of notes and you enter a channel number and that's it. However, there's one special situation where if you select multiple notes and those notes are on different MIDI channels. So let me make a selection here and I'll show you what I mean. I made a selection of notes here, and you'll see that the channel parameter is blank. That's because some of these notes are using different MIDI channels. Now, in this situation, the only basically the only thing you can do is set all the notes to the same channel. Let me type in 9, press Enter, and now all the selected notes are using MIDI channel 9. And that's basically it. The Event Inspector is a very powerful tool and that is how you use it to edit MIDI data in Cakewalk Sonar. For more pro audio and music technology tutorials, 
go to digifreak.com question mark digifreak videos. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for the free newsletter at digifreak.com question mark digifreak to stay informed about when new videos are posted. In addition, check out garagus.com question mark pro audio tutor for professional audio DVDs and training.